Hi, and welcome to my video about how to cure HIV. My name is Ari Halley, and I'm a researcher at Northwestern University. I want to talk to you about HIV because even after 40 years, we still don't have a cure. HIV has seen leaps and bounds in the development of effective treatments, from when it was considered a death sentence in the 1980s through to the mid-1990s, where we first developed effective treatment drugs called antiretroviral therapy. These drugs dramatically increase the life expectancy of people living with HIV, but they're not a cure. And this is a problem. Because these drugs are so life-saving, we have more people than ever living with HIV and aging with HIV. People need to go to the doctor regularly for monitoring. They have to take a pill every day. And most crucially, they age about 10 to 15 years faster, and we don't really know how to stop it. So why can't we cure HIV? Why can't someone just take a short course of a drug, like Paxlovid for COVID-19, clear all the virus from their body, and be completely cured? The reason is because of how HIV infects the body. HIV is a type of virus called a retrovirus, which actually embeds a copy of its genome into your DNA. Essentially, it nestles a viral blueprint into the blueprint for you, which all your cells carry. And so when your cells go about their daily business and maintain your body, they will also inadvertently make more virus particles. And in a sort of perverse undermining of the very role of the immune system, HIV infects specifically immune cells. The cells it slips its blueprint in are your immune cells. And not just any immune cells, but a particular subset called immune memory cells. These cells are literally the memory of the immune system, remembering past infections so if we encounter that disease again, we can fight it off without feeling sick. Sort of like how an elephant never forgets, right? <coughs> immune memory cells live in your body for years, even decades, the secret arsenal in your body's aircraft hangar, waiting in case you ever encounter the disease they remember again. HIV infects these cells, and this allows the virus to live in your body for essentially as long as you live. Like the proverbial plane in the aircraft hangar, these cells are in a state known as quiescence. They're essentially asleep, unused, waiting to be reactivated by an invading pathogen. Quiescent memory cells aren't really having to do any work to maintain themselves, so they aren't using their blueprints very much, and they aren't producing virus. As a result, they actually evade surveillance by the rest of the immune system. Other immune cells don't know they're infected, and this creates the perfect hiding place for the virus. What better place to secrete yourself than a cell that's never going to die and unlikely to reveal that you're there? The problem is that sometimes these memory cells will randomly wake up, just enough to produce a small amount of virus. They also wake up in response to the disease they remember. When someone is taking antiretroviral treatment, there are several blocks in place to prevent this small amount of virus from infecting new cells. But if someone stops their treatment, the small amount of virus produced by these random reactivation events can actually start a whole new wave of infection, even in someone who previously had no detectable virus in their blood. This is what we see when people living with HIV go off of antiretroviral treatment. Inevitably, even if their viral load was undetectable, they start producing a detectable amount of virus again within a few months. So what do we do? One strategy is called shock and kill. In this strategy, we first shock the infected memory cells, we wake them all up, make them think they need to spring into action, and cause them to start making virus again. This acts like a red flag to a bull for the rest of the immune system, who then swoops in to carry out the kill, clearing out all of these now visibly infected cells. My job at Northwestern is to research how we could use drugs to carry out this process. Eventually, we could even have a pill composed of a combination of drugs that would stimulate the immune system to carry out this process in a matter of days this would lay the final nail in the coffin of the global HIV epidemic.